the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. This is critical. Let's go to the, uh, the parable of the sword. I mean, you're going to be like, oh, man. I should have been listening to what, what the Lord is saying. And that's what I'm saying even with myself. It's not just you. It's me, too. We have to be able to stay in control. We have to realize that this is the way we can be successful. Now, in this one, in Mark chapter 4, Jesus gave a parable. And then after he gave the parable, his disciples came and asked for understanding. And that's why we're doing this segment here. It says in verse 10, Mark 4, starting verse 10, when he was alone, they were about him. With the 12, asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. That's talking about you too now. But unto them that are out, all these things are done in parables. They seeing they may see and not perceive. In hearing, they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted. And their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, look at this now, y'all. Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? The sower sows the word. Let's stop up for a second before we go further. Because I want to make sure you get this. Jesus said, if you get this parable, because he said, no, it's not this parable. How then will you know all parables? This is the mother load of all parables. As we go through life, if we can comprehend this parable, if we can comprehend, if you can comprehend this parable, and I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that your eyes are open to understand this parable because then you can apply it to your everyday life in every other parable that comes in the Bible. All lines up with this one. This is the mother load of all parables. And I know you're going to get it because look, it, you, because you listen to this video, God has called you in the day for this time to get understand. Amen. So let's go ahead back to it. <laughs> you'll love it, 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 you will love it, you you will love it, I guarantee you. All right, remember like I said, he said, no, it's not this parable, how then we know all parables, right? Now, and I even said, verse 14, I repeat, the sower sows the word, what word? The word of God. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard. Look who comes, y'all. Look who's come. Satan comes immediately and takes his way the word that was sown in their hearts. Many of you get deep and sit down and say, well, Satan, you'll come with the pig fork. No. Satan use people. Satan use things. If he can get to you personally, physically, he, he's a spirit being. He comes and use things around, especially people, to try to come and get that word that is sown in your heart. Why? Why is it so important? Because if that word can be rooted in your heart, you will be fruitful in the things of God and bear these fruits. Have you checked your fruit today? Look at this. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. When they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, look at this, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, I will, I'm going to stop for a second. I'll come back. I'll come back. I promise you. I'll come back. I just want you to see. Look, <laughs> look, what they, look at the game plan of the enemy. Just like in sports, just like in boxing, the, end, the, the whole purpose in a boxing match, if I can get you off your game, if I can get in your head and cause you to get offended, See, offended means you, 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 you're stopping the process of doing which is right. And now you get off the road, off track, off focus. And now the enemy can, can play his game on you and take control of you. Satan constantly is always stemming the enemy immediately into your mind, into your environment. 
to try to get the word from being sown in your heart. And I pray that you use this video today to get this parable and understand God wants you to stay in control. Don't let the enemy get you off base. Don't let the enemy get you offended. How does it get offended? And that's when we all end it and stop the process. I guarantee you, watch out for anybody to try to get you to lose self-control, get you off your game track. If you have an intent to do right and the enemy is, is intent to get you to do wrong, stay focused, keep your head in the game. It's a mind game in this thing. This warfare is a mind game. The arena of faith is in your mind, saints. So let's get back to it. So remember that. Don't get offended. Don't get offended because of what the enemy is trying to do. Stay focused. All right, you see what I said? I left off the 17. He said, in the enterprise, immediately they are offended. Hard ground me, hardened heart. It just, you just, you just, you just so hardened about different things. And you gotta remember, you don't need to have a hardened heart. You don't need to be offended. You don't need to walk in offense, but that's what the enemy wants you to do. Verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes what? Un fruitful. Now, this is this the other piece. Let's go ahead and stop for a second so you can meditate and chew on that. The enemy wants to use, and you know it, we are, most of us go through life dealing with all these cares. We, 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 we multitask and we, we get so focused that we lose focus. And it chose the word of God because we want the word of God to be our sustaining force. But we try to do things. Some of us work so much in the church, we don't get to do the, the main thing, which is staying focused and sitting at the feet and listening to the word of God. And then these other things, these cares of this world, we put, we put other people's cares in our life. We, and then we try to get some of us to all, all trying to get that money. We go for it. We reach out for the seat of the riches and, and, and it chokes the word. And, and then the biggest one is once again, is the lust of other things entering in and it chokes the word and the word becomes unfruitful and we can't keep it we can't keep we can't bear the fruits of the spirit have you checked your fruit today are you more lusting after things than after god are you more deceived by the riches and the cares of this world that you keep lose focus you allow any thorns that choke you i'm trying to tell you something because i guarantee you every last one of us go through this situation we go into things we get offended we 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 are getting distracted by the cares of this world some of us be so busy chasing that almighty dollar that we forget about the loving not only god but loving the people around us how many people lost their career how many people lost their marriages after they trying to go for this great success in this world all these things choke the word and make us unfruitful. So that's the that's the game plan of the enemy. That's what he wants you to do. If he can get you off base, he can get you to the point where you get offended. Number one, that's the first trick he tries to do. He tries to 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 use persecution, affliction, to 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 get you off fit. He's trying to offend you any way he can, and and then you know most of you get upset because the fact is that. When we try to do good and then people go off on us, it just trips you out. You're like, damn, when I was doing bad, I, I didn't get this much reaction. Why? Because the enemy don't care about you doing bad. The enemy is caring more about you trying to do good. So he tried to get into your situation, get into your head to get you offended. And like I said, again, the other thing, these cares of this world, choke the word, choke the word. You care about so many things that you lose focus and you become depressed because you so you care about these things. You become deceitful and richer when you're trying to go out there. And you, you, you do different things to try to get that almighty dollar that you don't even take time to focus on the things that's important around you to include your children, your wife, your girlfriend. Some things we, we, we can try to pursue one thing can just cause us to fall around, everything else to fall around us. And we see it in life every day. 
And then the lust of other things. We lust for things that we, we, we think is so important. And all it does, it chokes the word out of our life. And I'm talking about me too. It's not, this is not just for anybody. It's for everybody to watch out for the game plan enemy. Getting offended. Getting you all wrapped up around the chaos of this world. Being deceived by trying to chase power and greed and wealth. And then the other one is lust. Most people say, I want, the, I want the money. Well, it's just the fact is the cost that goes along with going after it. But verse 20 says, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Look at this. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, fold, some 60, and some 100. Have you checked your fruit today? Are you bringing in 30? 40 or 60 or 100? Are you bringing in the fruits? Are you, are you bearing love? Are you bearing joy? Are you bearing peace? And these things come from God, but he's telling you this is why you want to stay in control. You don't, you get out of control when you get offended. You get out of control when cares of this world gets into your situation. You get out of control when you see by riches that they're not attainable for they are attainable, you're gonna to have to pay a price that caused a lot of people to be left behind. If you, if that's what you want, just understand there's a cost to it. Especially if you lose focus on God, you have to make sure that you let the Holy Spirit be part of you, abide in Him. That He said, that's the way you can, you can be fruitful. He said, without Him, you can do nothing. Anything you do without Him, in most cases, in at a dead end. And that's not what you want. You don't want to be lusting for things. You'll find out that when you get something, you know, some people have, have lost their families lusting up for the opposite sex, lost their family lusting for money, lost their family lusting for, for, for other things. And unfortunately, when you get those things, you'll find out that it wasn't worth it. How many people lost their life for going after somebody the opposite uh, sex? And next thing you know, they they go into jail or they die. People have killed each other over somebody. And it, it's just it's just unfruitful, not profitable. And the only thing about it too, I want you to know is most things, whether it's a person or an item, a car, a house, all those things are decaying items. People get old, cars get old, houses get old. So don't, don't make that a high priority that you lose focus and lose control. Amen? Have you checked your food today? This is the last segment of the series. I hope you got this one. This pearl is important. The enemy gets you out of control through these items here as far as being offended, being focused on too many cares of other things, choking the word of God on your life, being deceived by riches, being deceived by lust. These things all are unfruitful and we have to stay in control. You can get all these things when you're in control. I like Michael Jordan, you know, probably one of the greatest basketball of all time because he stayed focused. You have a life. Stay focused and don't put things that are dying above your loved ones, above your relationship with God. Amen? Hope, I hope you enjoy this. Have you checked your food today? Hey, when you get a chance, look at these videos every once in a while. Just remind me, amen? God bless you.